but I don't feel like I'm supposed to go and beat people down. There's a guy down my way, down in Houston, smiling. Jo watch what Joel Osteen said in this interview, and then watch this pastor's response. Do you ever feel like you need to talk about sin more? You know what, I talk, I just feel like I do it in a different way, but, but I don't feel like I'm supposed to go and beat people down. Most people know what they're doing wrong. Before we get to the pastor's response, a few questions for Joel. Joel, do you believe people really understand that they are sinners who are rebelling against God, their creator, and deserve to be punished with hell? Joel, if you never teach about sin, judgment, wrath, or hell, then how will the people you're talking to know what it means to be saved from these things? Joel, do you think the job of pastors is to teach lost sinners how to be saved or to help them just feel good about themselves? Mylon Jones says sinners don't need to be told they're sinners. They know they're sin. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. They look at the guy on the news who hacks somebody up and they say, that's a sinner, not me. The expressiveness of Otter the Critique you've shared touches on several key points regarding the teachings and practices of prominent televangelists like Joel Osteen and TDD, Jakes. Here are some of the main issues raised and a response to each. The prosperity gospel teaches that God wants believers to be wealthy, healthy, and successful, and that financial giving will result in material blessings. This message is often seen as preying on vulnerable people. The prosperity gospel is controversial because it can distort the Christian message, focusing on material wealth rather than spiritual growth and sacrifice. Jesus' teachings often emphasize humility, service, and the dangers of wealth, e.g. Matthew 6, 19, I'm okay because I never told you I was perfect. I never put down nobody. I got my own flaws and my own fault, but I didn't do that. <laughs> that ain't the kind of stuff you forget. <laughs> This girl right here. Universalism suggests that all people, regardless of their faith, will ultimately be saved. Critics argue this undermines the necessity of faith in Jesus Christ for salvation. Traditional Christian doctrine holds that salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ alone. John 14, 6, Acts 4, 12. Universalism challenges this by proposing a more inclusive path to salvation, which can be seen as conflicting with scriptural teachings. This is a King James Version Bible. It says to put a difference between the holy and the profane. This Bible says no man ever walked out of a confessional with his sins forgiven. This Bible says that God loves you. This Bible talks about a one world religion which you are being primed for tonight. You must turn your back on what is profane. This church is profane. You must turn, repent, believe the Bible, obey the Bible, or you will not make heaven. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. This Bible says repent. It says, Lord, Lord, why do you say you love me and do not the things which I say? There are concerns about the interpretation and presentation of Scripture by these leaders, especially when messages of repentance and the reality of sin and judgment are downplayed. Preaching should ideally balance the message of God's love with the call to repentance and the reality of judgment. The New Testament frequently calls believers to repentance and highlights the consequences of sin. Luke 13, 3, Acts 17, 30. Sometimes we don't agree with how things have played out in our lives. And in those moments, we get upset with God. And when we get upset with God, we miss out on something. God agrees with you that that should have never happened. God agrees with you that death should have never been in the world. God agrees with you 
that that level of pain, that level of trauma should have never been your experience. Sometimes we miss out on the reality that what we are currently living in is a fallen world. This was not God's plan. This was not God's desire. God didn't want you to go through that abuse. God says, I can agree that you should have never went through that. I can agree that you deserved better. I can agree with you on that where you and I disagree is that your story is over. The moment where pain entered the picture, God says, I disagree with that. As a matter of fact, I can make all things work together for your good. Where you and God disagree is not about what happened. You and God disagree about what he can do with what you have left over. God says, I never wanted you to know death. I never wanted you to know abandonment. I never wanted you to know divorce. But now that you know it, I want to show you what my glory can do when it sits on top of your brokenness. I want to show you what my glory can do when it gets in the middle of that heartbreak. I come into agreement with you God. The appointment of women pastors like Sarah Jakes is seen by some as unbiblical based on certain scriptural passages. The role of women in ministry is a debated topic within Christianity. While some denominations strictly interpret these passages to prohibit women from pastoral roles, others understand them in a historical context and support women's leadership in the church, citing examples of female leaders in the Bible. It is so much harder to love a real one than it is to be in relationship with the fraud. Say that, say that, to say that again for the people in the back. <laughs> it is in the back. so much harder <laughs> to be in relationship with a real one than it is to be with a fraud. It's just, it's just hard because someone who holds you accountable to who you say you want to be, someone who recognizes your potential, but meet you where you are. Someone who wants your vulnerability. Like, I want to know how you think. I want to know why you made the choices you made. It requires a level of intimacy that you never have to do when you're just trying to see if someone's cheating and checking phone messages. And like, you don't have to be vulnerable in those relationships. You got to be tough. You got to be strong. You got to be hard. But now here comes someone that says, I want to be your soft place. And you got to figure out how do I tear these walls down? And you have to figure out how do I give this language and how do I let them know up underneath this strength that there's still there is still a broken 13 year old girl a broken 15 year old girl and I got to let you see her and to let you see how she sometimes gets upset and flares up and it's just it's petrifying to let someone that closely into your space the message of some televangelists is seen as a false gospel that focuses on personal gain rather than true discipleship and sacrifice accountability and sound doctrine are crucial in Christian leadership the New Testament warns against false teachers and emphasizes the importance of adhering to the true gospel. 2 Peter 2, 1, 3, Galatians 1, 6, 9. There's a concern that messages which neglect the reality of God's judgment and the necessity of repentance are misleading and an unloving. While the message of God's love and grace is central to the gospel, it should also include the call to repentance and the warning of judgment to present a full picture of Christian teaching. The discussion around these issues is complex, and opinions vary widely within the Christian community. The key is to seek a balanced understanding of scripture and maintain integrity and accountability in teaching and leadership. Aggressive Transformers is literally nuts. I absolutely adore them. 